Charles Herman Bruno Crete was an American writer. He was born in 1862 in Canada, the son of Carlo Julius Max Crete and Johanna Dorothea Friedricha Maria Held. Around 1892 he married Matilda Tawley or Knight in California. He was living in Fresno in 1940 and died in 1941. We will review his 1909 The Lost Mine of the Mono, A Tale of the Sierra Nevada. We have Paul Carrington being invited to the ranch of his friend Roger Waring, who had invited him over many times without success. As he does so, Paul sees a great piece of quartz on a shelf in the Waring house, which is almost the same as one he had seen being possessed by his uncle Thomas. It turns out Roger had met Thomas a few years ago without knowing he was Paul's uncle, the old man being infamous in the region for his search of the fabled lost mine of the Mono. The location of this mine had been known to a local native tribe until a few years ago, when their chief Volupa was found foully murdered, and with him went the knowledge of its location. Waring had been familiar with the case, but nothing had been done about it and the killer was never found. Mulling all this over, Paul agrees to Roger's invitation to go on a tour of the mountains, with several of Roger's friends, namely Ballard, Sutcliffe, and the odd boy Silas Staten. Out on the trail, they meet a shepherd, or rather his well-stocked camp, before they meet the man himself. As they eat, they are approached by a man, Joe Gray, whom the book keeps calling half-breed a lot, due to being the son of a white man and a squaw. And as they sit, they discuss how odd it seems there is no game in the region, suggesting the natives purposefully chase it away to prevent any hunters from finding the mine by accident. Joe's response is to sweat bullets. Just then, there is a sudden plume of smoke rising above the mountain, and those are totally not smoke signals. Then the rather slow pace of the ascent, where every step is described in excessive topographical detail, grinds to a halt as Roger goes on and on about his belief in spiritism. He even has an impromptu seance for some reason. Then they go on and meet Joe's father, Old Grey, who seems oddly emotional to see Paul for some reason. Moving along, they find a great dead tree on fire and soon find a cabin nearby containing another dead body. This being the body of Paul's Uncle Thomas. He did die a natural death, it seems. But then Paul finds a letter addressed to Roger, expecting his imminent arrival, while the others find a freshly dug grave. After going to tell Paul's cousin Ida the news of her father's death, they read the dead man's diary. And this is where the story just bottoms out. Yes, the first part of the book was a somewhat over-explained journey in the mountains based on relocations. But now say goodbye to Ballard and Staten and the rest, as their whole introduction was entirely pointless. And yes, even all of Staten's weird prescience and weirdly specific knowledge about what goes on in the forest were meaningless as well. For now, we will hear Uncle Thomas go on about that time where, after several years of being alone in his cabin looking for the mine, remember when that was important, his dead wife starts talking to him. And when she is there, you wish she was not. As all she ever does is talk about how man must get back to God and to serve his purpose by serving God, and how God is good, and how he did is the afterlife she is lounging about in, and about all the layers of spiritual development the soul must go through to withstand the presence of God, and she just does not ever stop. The tale of finding a lost mine is now virtually forgotten, as Rose blathers on for dozens of pages. Before the old man does find the mine, but dies of heart failure, and an avalanche buries it forever, so oops. The old man awaiting his impending death prophesied by his dead wife Hass and Pathos, but the preaching ruins any atmosphere the book had. 